So, welcome to the last talk for tonight for uh, the second EHSM. Um, uh, now we're going to have a talk by Dmitry Kostyuk. Is that how you say your name? Very good. So um, he's been reviewing uh, decades worth of uh, toolkits for graphical us user interfaces and widgets, uh, starting all the way back with uh, the Lisa, the Macintosh uh, precursor, the Apple Lisa back in the 1980s. Um, and he's going to talk about uh, these 30 years of evolution of widget toolkits. So welcome, uh, Dimitri, to the stage. We need the slides on uh, the VGA. What is it? <laughs> Sorry about this. Was. Hmm? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. But. Yes, but no. <laughs> wrong, yes, wrong screen, I have. Yes, desktop. I'm on the wrong screen, and I have to make desktop clone mod. Mm -hmm. But as far as I am the last speaker, <laughs> it will be not a problem. Mm -hmm. So I have several variants to choose among. One is to move. Yeah. <laughs> to the next desktop. Oh, sorry. Go to left and right. Yeah. yeah there you it's go. here. One variant is to move picture to other desktop. Unfortunately, I will not see it, but at least you will see. <laughs> it should be enough. Okay, uh, maybe some of you uh, remember my talk on the first EHSM meeting, which was about the history of graphical operating systems for mobile devices. Frankly speaking, I have um, several such talks. But of course, um, the talk about desktop graphical user interface history, um, well, it is one of the oldest talks, and a lot of good materials about the history of graphical user interface is already available online. Uh, frankly speaking, in my talk about the history of desktop GUI, I've borrowed some um, from this good and line reviews. So uh, I, refer I decided to make um, this presentation from a little bit different view. Not the history of graphical interface, but the history of programming graphical applications. We will see how widgets and other elements are looking. We will see the portions of source code just to visually compare and to discuss some features. And to make this presentation even more experimental, I'll use uh, real virtualized graphical applications instead of screenshots. So uh, perhaps everything will try to froze itself, and so on. Be prepared. <laughs> well, let us see what do we have here. As it was promised, I will start speaking from the Apple Lisa, which is known to be the first publicly um, appreciated graphical operating system. Maybe some of you remember that 
Xerox was the inventor, or the creator of graphical user interface, or at least windowing interface, and Douglas Engelbart, who have invented mouse, he have invent invented almost everything uh, about graphical user interface, but not for public. And first graphical desktop really accessible to public, to people, was this strange thing known as Apple Lisa. Uh, nowadays, you can play with it just because disks or disk images, diskettes images are freely available on the Apple FTP. And there is an open source simulator, Lisa M, so-called, which allows you to try and to look how it was. Uh, frankly speaking, Lisa had no dedicated widget toolkit. Obviously, Lisa had widgets, but these widgets were parts of operating system, and programmer had to examine the whole architecture of the operating system to know how to create new graphical application. Of course, it was uncomfortable. You had to write something on Pascal. You had uh, to use some portions of assembler just because not all things were accessible from Pascal language and the um, processing power of this Lisa computer was, hmm. you will see. Um, just a moment, let us switch some application. Maybe it is switching, maybe not. Yeah, it is. It works in real time. Frankly speaking, this is the most comprehensive uh, options dialog from Lisa, and you see that widgets were mm, no widgets. Well, they were these dark and white quadrants are checkboxes, but mm, there are some uh, message boxes appearing. Please note that they are appearing as a narrow band on the top of your window, like in Google's web applications like Gmail, for example, nowadays. And that was not the worst thing about Lisa. The worst thing was that you couldn't program applications for Lisa using Lisa. It was like Android devices nowadays. Uh, there was a separate operating system, Lisa Workshop. <clears throat> its graphical capabilities were really limited. It had only one graphical application, text editor. And it also had a command line interface. You should type something in this text editor, save, then try to compile it via the command line. After that, reboot to Lisa operating system and try to execute it. And then reboot back, fix, and one more problem, normal debugging was impossible, of course. Lisa had no development tools. Workshop had no Lisa. So real-time debugging. Mm. Uh, Lisa operating system had uh, rather powerful tools of error messages instead. And uh, well, you see uh, Hello World here. The main uh, widget, the word widget didn't exist yet. Uh, the main widget of this time was, well, mm, quick draw. Let us think about it as about canvas. 
in HTML or any other language, the panel on which you can draw anything. So this example is about drawing uh, words, hello world, on Lisa's canvas. Please look. Uh, some strange mixture of Pascal and, well, it's Pascal, and uh, some strange operations about heap, some workarounds which are needed to make application work because without these workarounds it wouldn't. Not obvious. Once could be uh, copied only from example. And uh, the only one reasonable string, oh, several reasonable strings may be initializing the quick draw, uh, moving to some special coordinates and drawing string hello world. So uh, the upper part is not for designer of interface or programmer of interface. And one more moment. I think we can try to close it just to see how Lisa Workshop was looking. Exit. Yes. It uh, um, asks me a question whether I really want to quit or not. Maybe. No. It's not easy to pass a um, letter to simulated virtualized image. No. OK. Gray screen, command line, nothing interesting. And we will not compile it. We will save some time. Uh, the next slide, so-called Andrew project. You see uh, it is dated with one year earlier than Lisa. Uh, I will make several jumps backwards in years, just for logical reasons. Uh, frankly speaking, nobody knows about this project, but it was a real predecessor of Lisa. Uh, it was developed in Carnegie Mellon University, just uh, for distributed graphical environment in the campus network. And uh, frankly speaking, it had uh, its own comprehensive set of, well, not widgets yet, but so-called graphical user interface toolkit elements. But the approach was a really little bit different. The main element of this hmm, widget toolkit was word processor, full-featured word processor, which could uh, contain any other widgets which were existing in the system. Something like OLE automation in Microsoft Windows, for example, but used everywhere in the shell. For example, what can we do? We can embed any code any applications instead of any text document. If you want mail client, it will be the little bit redesigned word processor, and so on. By the way, uh, I think I can launch it. I am the last speaker. <laughs> So EZ was the name of this main part. And what about widgets? Widgets were terrible. Here they are. These black ellipses are checkboxes. I can even click them. Um, well, that Dialog was a text style customization. It was available in all applications just because all applications contained this EZ 
word processor. Uh, it is open source. It's still available in some distributives, distributions like Debian, for example. Nobody uses. Later versions even uh, are RTF aware. So they can even open RTF documents. For whom? Nobody knows. Well, 1985, a rather funny thing took place. The appearance of first version of Windows and the SDK, known as Win Application Programming Interface, Win API. Well, <laughs> this SDK uh, was initially sold for a little bit less than $500, contained several examples like Hello World and, uh, well, header files. And the idea embedded into this API was, well, the initial idea was great to make interface as much flexible as it possible. The implementation was hmm. <clears throat> was a little bit strange. Uh, to make developer able to tweak everything, they made developable, uh, developer forced to tweak everything to write graphical application. <laughs> you will see. Uh, this API features one of the most, well, one of the most scandalous, um, ah, one of the most scandalous um, Hello World, just because it contains several files. Well, it's typical, but largest of these files was 120 lines of code just to write hello. Mm, frankly speaking, saying that it was as much terrible, little bit unfair. Why? You see this code. First of all, they are using old style of uh, declaring functions when all parameters of function are listed in separate lines. Beside that, they are, uh, are creating a comprehensive Hello World with help, icon, and something else, maybe menu. But it's still Hello World, and it's still too much to program just to write, hi, everybody. And uh, one more funny thing. If someone here remembers Win API, it looks the same, unfortunately. Of course, it was tweaked, but not much since this funny moment. So, oh, 1988. It was birth of the graphical technology all open source users are familiar with nowadays, the birth of X Windows system. Uh, the project was also intended to automate university campus, but the different university, not Carnegie Mellon, uh, but uh, the same for MTI. And, uh, well, you know, uh, Carnegie Mellon University was founded by Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Mellon. The, that's why uh, the name of their graphical user environment was Andrew Project. And uh, the name of Project Athena has no such traced roots. But anyway, this project 
brought into life a lot of technologies we are using nowadays. Uh, not only X window system, the well-known Kerberos uh, authentic authentication server. If uh, someone using LDAP authentication nowadays with science certificates, they use this Kerberos server also. Um, and some other technologies. What about widgets? Well, these widgets are present in all Linux or Unix, other Unix-like operating systems which are using X Windows system, practically in all of them. They are even installed, all these applications, these black and white and strange X eyes, X man, and so on. All of you uh, who have Linux perhaps are having them on your PC, not using, but you are able to type xcalc and to see this little bit strange calculator. Nothing changed. And uh, frankly speaking, that's great for those who would like for some reason to review the history. You know, the open source is like a large, large store for all ancient shells and technologies. Uh, the widget set was uh, really comprehensive. You see not only uh, buttons, sorry, and where is this? Oh, here it is. Not only buttons, uh, scrollers, but well, some more complex gadgets, scroll bars which are known to react on different mouse buttons, left button to scroll forward, right buttons to scroll black. You see uh, some diagrams and so on. Uh, and some uh, widgets which are not interesting for anybody, like trees. Nobody knows what are they for. Uh, what about code? Code is not very complex. Of course, it's not the code of this comprehensive application. It's just code of graphical hello world. It creates only one button with label hello, but, well, not so difficult. Uh, it, you can even read it. You create some top-level widget, initialize it, uh, then somehow uh, create callback just to process events, maybe closing. Yes, yes, quit. And run the main loop of waiting for graphical events. Not win IPI. Much more readable, of course. University. What is next? Oh. Next is really interesting graphical user interface nobody knows about. Created at the same time, it was first attempt to create a standard of graphical user interface for Unix operating systems. You see ATT, Sun Microsystem, Xerox. Um, it was 1988, and they tried to create anything which is safe from uh, Apple's lawyers. So buttons are rounded. Scroll bars are not like apples, but, well, you see them. You will see them even more. Uh, interesting thing, uh, you can use a left mouse button to activate, quickly activate default element of menu or right mouse button. I'll try to do it to activate um, point you want. And uh, these scroll bars are reproduced in last versions of Ubuntu Unity interface, you know? Maybe you remember them. Uh, it's not very comfortable just because a button moves 
while you scroll. So usually people don't use them. Only shuttle world likes. Mm? And uh, his predecessors, of course. Um, those who want to play with several applications from this open look, from its implementation for uh, X window system, which is known as XView, uh, it is available in Debian. Maybe in some other distributions, don't know. Uh, but from the mainstream list of distributions, Debian still contains it. Frankly speaking, this is Debian. <laughs> Um, frankly speaking, yeah. The same year uh, was very important into history, in the history of not only Unix interfaces, but in trends of following 10 or even 15 years. For somehow strange reasons, but it was. It was uh, the appearance of another attempt to create the standardized Unix graphical interface. Uh, it had advantages. First of all, uh, OpenLook was not a library. OpenLook was a standard, and there were several inc incom incompatible implementations. This one was much better because it included Motif widget sets, which was a real software, terribly commercial, frankly speaking. But, well, and uh, people say that this motif widget set is not very comfortable to program. Uh, they have no, perhaps they have no experience of programming in pure Win API. Uh, what about widgets? You know them. Oh, no, you shouldn't. Close, sorry. I just wanted Oh, not important. Um, the type of widgets is very, well, industrial styled. No, almost no rounded parts. Triangulars, rectangulars, gray. Um, enterprise style. What about programming? People blame it, but Hello World program is pretty good. It's short. I can fit it on my screen with some additional text. Unfortunately, the um, Widget Toolkit itself was, as I previously told, uh, not only commercial one. Uh, at first, they wanted even uh, wanted programmers to pay license fees from each of applications which were developed for Motif. But uh, really soon, the clone uh, named Less Tiff have appeared. And after that, well, they stopped uh, getting license fees. And somewhere near the millennium, um, they, made open uh, they made it freeware, so-called open motif. And uh, two years ago, the whole CD, common desktop environment, and motif itself were turned into open source, the GPL software. Just because of that, we were seeing here what we were seeing. We were seeing, once again, a flavor of Debian distribution with bundled Motif desktop environment. What about the source code? Well, widget, top-level widget, uh, like in X Windows programming, plain X Windows, some main widget, button with label hello world and the same lines add this sorry add this button to what just a moment 
I have told that we will have some problems. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit strange, but perhaps I will have to make um, just a moment. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I'll have to make a short reboot <laughs> to see the second part of presentation, just because the uh, amount of operating memory is not enough to fit whole set of virtualized machines. Sorry. Can we temporarily switch? Mm -hmm. Thank you. It will take uh, about one minute. And it's unpredictable effect. Mm -hmm. uh, while it is rebooting, uh, several words about how is this presentation done. What is it? Well, you already know that it is the most fat presentation you have ever seen. Fat in gigabytes, just because it contains uh, about 14 or 17 um, virtualized operation systems instead of pictures. Um, therefore, I have to use HTML5 slides framework, the VNC client written in JavaScript is used in frames of these slides just to show the image of virtualized operating system. Well, uh, of course, the approach has some problems. One problem is relative mouse movements. Uh, those operating systems which are not supporting USB tablets, well, the speed of host cursor and guest cursor are unfortunately different. And it's not so easy to click buttons. Uh, for new operating systems, there is no such a problem, of course. And the other problem is eating resources, as you may imagine. Not all ancient operating systems are able to use the idle instructions of central processor unit, and because of that, they are fighting for your processor of your host system. Um, This presentation is part of the virtualized graphical interface timeline. And the timeline, timeline itself, oh, maybe we can switch. Just a moment. No. <laughs> turn off and turn on once again, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, okay. It will, it will appear. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Very well. So um, the system itself is a typical GNOME desktop. And while it opens, Okay. Oh, no. Right side, yes.
Ну? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will spoil me some time. Uh, while testing on desktop with 16 gigabytes of operating memory, uh, effects are looking a little bit different. But frankly speaking, this um, 30 virtualized operating systems are eating the six cores of processors rather aggressively. Sorry? Wow. Unfortunately, it's still thinking. Oh. Maybe a minute. Hope no, but... And uh, the SSD drive <laughs> is highly uh, recommended for such experiments, of course. Uh, I'll try to speed up the presentation just because we have several slides. Yet, well, where are you? The last one we were speaking about was, oh, wow! <laughs> unfreezing. Nice. Or almost unfreezing. So the, so the process is, is going. Um, one more operating system we have planned to discuss should be, well, Frankly speaking, first of all, now we are going to talk about, about, about. <laughs> hmm. About what? Oh, good sign. <laughs> Wow, it's normal. I have stopped uh, the first part of virtual machines. So you see uh, background only. Yes, the first one we are speaking about is so-called next operating system. The story is really funny, uh, once again, just because uh, Steve Jobs was fired from Apple and he had to invent something which was uh, not able to be prohibited by Apple's lawyers. Something without uh, the desktop metaphor, without recycle bin on the desktop, without the main menu on top of the screen, and uh, they have created this next step operating system. Well, not this next step operating system, this is its open source clone GNU step with Window Maker, Window Manager, some Know, the, know it. Um, it was written in Objective-C just because at this moment it was new promising programming language. No C++ yet. Objective-C just appeared. And it was C but with objects. Well, um, the main feature of this language was, uh, you know, um, you can divide Objective uh, or object-oriented programming languages into two parts. Uh, one which implement a real situation when there are objects which are like black boxes, they are sending messages one to another. Objective-C is like this. Uh, the others only allow you to use object-oriented paradigm, but not force you. And uh, 
this one forced, this one language implemented a real um, messages exchanged among objects. Uh, usually you asked objects about uh, values of their variables or you ask them to execute some function, some method of this object, but you had to send a special message for that. And uh, this feature have brought uh, introspection of objects, which means that running objects, object can be asked to tell what is it, what, um, well, what methods it has, and so on. This Specifics allowed to create first rapid application development system back in 1987. You know, like, uh, well, C++ builder or Qt creator nowadays. The code is not compact. The code is large. And, uh, well, you see these square brackets all these square brackets are sending some messages to objects. Programmers for iPhone and iPad are doing this still. Doing, doing, doing. Frankly speaking, it's much simpler to write name of an object and the method which must be invoked. Like it is done in C++, but this weakness of this language, syntax, was not very comfortable, but it was also its advantage from the graphical user interface point of view. And 1990, uh, just to know what had happened, what took place uh, outside of personal computers, Amiga operating system have introduced its own widget toolkit. It was named Get Tools Library. Uh, <laughs> The IP was named Boopsy. They were poets, I think. And um, rather comfortable IP, but non-scalable, absolutely, from the graphics point of view. Fixed fonts, fixed size of widgets, fixed size of screen, like Symbian operating systems of Nokia. Um, we can see how it looks nowadays. At the beginning of 90s, it was not so slick, of course, but the programming was exactly the same. You see, the code is really short. It is C++, but frankly speaking, it is not C++. It is C++ uh, eaten by uh, macros. You even can't recognize what takes place here. Some commas, and so they created uh, some boopsy language from uh, typical C++ by a strong, strong fr macro front end. It was not very good idea just because macros are bad in debugging because they are, well, they don't exist when you run your application. They are processed by preprocessor before the application is compiled. But the code is really simple. The same time, Microsoft tried to transit, or to take programmers from the world of 16-bit Windows IP to 32-bit Win IP, API. Uh, the idea was uh, to allow 16-bit applications running in 32-bit operating systems and using 32-bit IP without knowing that this API is 32-bit and not 16-bit. It was done uh, with use of some very um, unusual tricks. A lot of work was done just for this backward compatibility. Everything worked. Nobody believed that it was possible. But from uh, the visual point of view, uh, 
uh, the interface was uh, somehow copied from next operating systems, the wholly uh, gray and three-dimensional widgets. What else? Wrapper toolkits. Well, wrapper toolkits is toolkits that don't draw interface by themselves. Instead of that, they use different widget toolkits to actually draw widgets. Wrapper toolkits existed mainly in Windows. Reasons. The first reason is WinAP is too complex. Some other reasons. Well, uh, simplify event processing, uh, add some multi-threading, and uh, allow your application to be executed in or to be compiled for several platforms, for Unix, for Windows, for example. Most known visual toolkits for Windows, huh, uh, Microsoft Foundation classes, the wrapper toolkits from Microsoft, the first and the most successful one, Java, the first attempt of Sun Microsystems to create cross-platform interface, and some others. Not all Windows-compatible toolkits are wrappers. Such toolkits as Qt, GTK+, and some others uh, are drawing widgets by themselves. So you see how it looks. Uh, some of them are using Win32, Win API, to draw widgets, and others, and others don't. Nineteen ninety-one um, brought us the shortest graphical hello world in the whole history of graphical user interface. You see, uh, it's scripting tickle, so-called tickle language. Mm. Frankly speaking, two buttons. One is create button. Uh, two lines. One is creating button. The other packs it somewhere into the interface. Of course, it's cross-platform, uh, but unfortunately, uh, until 1997, it used gray-styled motif buttons and widgets on all platforms. Therefore, it wasn't widely used outside of Unix operating systems. Just looked non-native. But uh, the code is simplest great. 1992, a little bit more about Microsoft Foundation classes. The idea of the beginning of 90s was uh, that you are creating child classes from modified widgets. Uh, in the initial form, you had to derive your own class from button to make a custom label. It was very object-oriented. It was not very comfortable. It is still used nowadays, unfortunately. 1993 have seen the victory of CDE, Common Desktop Environment. Uh, it was not a very lucky event, just because uh, this gray and little bit ugly style of motif was declared the default Unix style. But uh, Sun Microsystems have open-sourced XU for those who still wanted it. So this open-look uh, implementation is the first, or at least the oldest, open-source widget toolkit in the world. Java, created in 1995. Uh, of course, you know about binaries which are compiled, uh, about sources that are compiled into bytecode, which can be executed in Java Virtual Machine on all platforms without recompilation. Uh, at the very beginning, they created so-called AWT widget set. They thrown away all widgets which didn't exist on some platforms. For example, Motif had no tabs, Java has no tabs. 
Uh, Motif could not uh, interact with mouse wheel. Java could not interact with mouse wheel. Compatibility. But uh, this uh, AWT uh, had management of widgets. Just because buttons have different size on different platforms, so the toolkit itself took care of placement of buttons on your screen. They were not snapped to grid. It's great. Everything should use such approaches. Until 1995, it was not so popular, but getting acquainted with Java programmers got idea of the attractiveness of such approach. Several slides about the Qt and GDK+. Plus. They also have appeared in 1990s. Qt was uh, the same, uh, Qt had the same approach. C++ with macro, with macros to implement some features which are absent in plain C++. It's comfortable, uh, it's beloved for its slot and signal abstractions when signals are connected to slots. Not bad. But, frankly speaking, you see GDK appeared in 1997. It is in plain C. It is totally object-oriented in non-object-oriented language. It was supposed to be impossible, but, you know, uh, one more useful feature of GDK, the creator of this toolkit wasn't afraid of so-called callbacks. There are different ways to pass uh, address of function which handles an event to the system. Uh, from the traditional point of view, program should not pass address of its own function to somewhere up a level to operating system, for example, just because the hierarchy is broken. GTK does this, just passes the pointers to functions, and it turns to be very comfortable. Frankly speaking, nowadays, such approaches are used really wide. 1997, uh, okay. The last attempt of Tickle to dominate the world. It tried to look natively on all platforms. In Windows, it tried to draw native Windows widgets. Unfortunately, in Unix, it tried to draw Motif style, just because Motif was default look of Unix applications. Why? Because Qt and GTK had powerful skin engines, and no one visual style could be called the main style of these toolkits. So no one else pretended to be the default look of Unix desktop, and therefore, Tickle have co still copied more and more outdated motif, and it was less and less used for this reason. Well, <clears throat> 1997 was really funny uh, in Windows world just because Sun have recreated uh, its widget toolkits from scratch. It wasn't wrapper anymore. It wasn't native anymore, but suddenly uh, Windows users like it like a message from heaven. Um, they were tired really tired from the style of typical Windows widgets. And these swing widgets have shown that there is a strong demand for skins or any other way to change visual style on Windows platform. Um, frankly speaking, there were two approaches to change or uh, to create customized widgets. One was to uh, draw a lot of bitmaps one after over another and to make them visible on invi or invisible. Press the button, unpressed button, you know. 
The other one was to uh, take part into painting cycle of Win API. It was uh, technically um, better. It was faster, but unfortunately, the GDI buffer of Windows GDI pool was only 128 kilobytes, and it was easily overflowed with bitmaps. And um, the result was really poor. Skin have disappeared suddenly, or crash took place with applications. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, in Windows, some uh, talented designers are creating really uh, memorial and glorious applications. Just this one, for example, was a simple um, photo editor, which, well, I'll save some time, which uh, also was later used by Steve Jobs to copy this aqua style. But these interfaces were uh, non-reproducible, of course. And 1998, the first skin engine for Windows have appeared, so-called Windows Blinds. Uh, Non-stable, just because of poor size of GDI pool. With a lot of skins, totally commercial. Uh, it made applications freeze and crash, oftenly, but still it was, by, it was bought by a lot of people. It had a really strong demand. And finally, uh, Microsoft have cloned this Windows Blinds engine in Windows XP. Not bought, just copied the architecture. And of course, enlarged the GDI poll. Well, speed up the cacao widgets. The programming is not interesting just because uh, it was a redesigned next step API. Uh, Apple have asked Steve Jobs to come back. He took his next step graphical user environment with him, added the PDF engine borrowed from a uh, licensed from Adobe to draw all these buttons. Frankly speaking, this Adobe Acrobat, you know, it's, it's used, the code from Adobe Acrobat is used to draw all buttons on the screen. Maybe uh, the last slide, the last event in open source world of widgets, of course, was seen in 2008, yeah? the first moments when we have seen the decrease of popularity of visual styles in Unix. That's uh, the statistics of downloading from different uh, web sites, specialized. Uh, what are the reasons? Frankly speaking, one of the reasons is a new uh, Qt engine which really looks great. Um, all other styles you can download for the Qt and K desktop project are looking a little bit poorer than default one. That's the reason. In GDK world, there is also a decrease of popularity of skins by a little bit different reason. The third GNOME fork of GDK into GDK2 and GDK3, three which are incompatible with each other, decrease of amount of developers. Uh, anyway, two new skins, which are finally created two standards of new Unix-like desktops. Well, good news, this slide is the last. Frankly speaking, I have um, passed two source code files, but I think it's okay. Thank you.
time for maybe a couple quick questions, if anyone has any. Which uh, toolkit was the first one to have a palette with a drag and drop interface? Well, and mm -hmm. I'm also I'm curious uh, what kind of containers you were running your examples in. Just a moment. Uh, the first question. Uh, you know, drag and drop interface was uh, first of all introduced in Apple Lisa, of course, uh, but. Um, drag and drop was present practically in all operating systems. Uh, it was most um, comprehensive in ABM OS2 operating system, which is not presented here just because its graphical API uh, looked like, well, it was not revolutionary. And uh, the idea of a drag and drop was used there everywhere. You could uh, drag uh, color from palette in your graphical editor to your desktop and uh, you got other background of your desktop suddenly. You could drop, uh, drag and drop fonts, other elements. Users didn't know that it was possible, but uh, suddenly uh, they, have, they had noticed that it's possible to drag something to some unusual place and crying, oh, magic. Um, some features of this absolute drag and drop were borrowed into a uh, common desktop environment into CDE, and uh, just because uh, IBM, after abandonment of OS2, OS2, have taken some most interesting features from it, like the drawer on the bottom of your screen, for example, and this drag and drop feature. So uh, drag and drop was used practically everywhere. And uh, if speaking about containers, which I use for virtual machines, oh, it's not me. Um, I hope. I didn't touch anything. If speaking about containers, it's the QEMU uh, emulator. It was chosen just because it can emulate uh, a wide range of processors, and not all ancient operating systems are able to be executed on Intel architecture, of course. Uh, frankly speaking, um, the whole set of virtualized operating systems, which is still uh, in the process of collecting, is 70. 70 containers, 30 of uh, mobile, and 40 of desktop operating systems. And um, the task is not so difficult Unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get three uh, remarkable operating systems of present times, uh, remarkable uh, from the point of view of the graphical interface innovations. But only three from 70 is not much. Thank you. So I think we're One more out question, of please. time now, so unfortunately we're out of time, but uh, thank you, Dimitri, for that history of uh, widgets talk. Thank you very much.